Hey everybody, good morning and welcome back to Mad Horse Barbecue. Uh, my name is Brian and in today's video we're going to be firing up my 55 gallon gateway drum smoker there and uh, smoking up a pork butt. Uh, we're going to do this at 300 degrees just because 300 is where I've been at lately. Or 275 to 300 where, you know, is where I've been at. Um, the charcoal we're using today is going to be the Blues Hog Lump. Uh, we are going to throw a chunk of hickory and a chunk of cherry right in there with it. And we're going to use the uh, the baffle plate I got for you from UDSparts.com. Um, I've had some questions um, about the baffle plate, and then I've seen, you know, that baffle plates sometimes is kind of a, you know, a topic on some of the Facebook groups. You know, I've seen some people saying that they've had some flare-ups with their baffle plates. Um, I've never had any um, with the baffle plate, but I don't know if I've ever ran at 300. So we're going to test that theory out today. Uh, I'm not worried about it. You know, we're going to run at 300 um, with the baffle plate in, you know, the whole time. So uh, I don't see... Uh, I don't foresee any problems arising, but, you know, if they do, we'll get them on tape. Um, weather today is supposed to be less than favorable, so like 80% chance of storms all day, 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. Uh, but these drums, you know, these things just cook phenomenally in bad weather. And, uh, you know, knowing that from experience, because that Oklahoma Joe's Bronco Pro I've used in all conditions, and it just, it, it works awesome in blizzards and rainstorms and all stuff like that. So I'm expecting the same thing here. So... Um, again, we're going to take you through step by step and everything I do. So the first thing we're going to do today is get the pit going. So let me take you in and we'll get this thing lit up. All right, first things first, I got both vents, one open and the other one open. You can see I got a Weber wax cube right at the bottom there. Let's just go ahead and light it. We're going to let that burn for about 15 minutes. So while this thing is burning, uh, I'm going to go in and get the pork butt rubbed up. So let's uh, take you inside and we'll do that. All right, we're back. Uh, inside here, we got the pork butt. This is about a eight pound pork butt. This is just a Hormel one. Uh, bought it from High V. Nothing, you know, special here, uh, but I've used these in the past and they work really well. Um, we are going to put a binder on this today, and the binder we're going to use is just some uh, some Blues Hog uh, 10 Red or Tennessee Red here. Um, pretty much out of mustard. Otherwise, I'd use mustard, but we'll go ahead and put a coat of the 10 Red on here first. Once we got that on, we're going to start by rubbing down fat cap side first but I'm going to be smoking this fat cap down um, that is the trend I have been on for like the last year or so as I smoke everything fat cap down for the most part so let's go ahead on with the rub the rub we're going to use today is the uh the blues hog sweet and savory so this will be like a blues hog cook um my brother's wife's father um kind of suggested maybe I do something a little simpler um you know when it comes to you know rubs and sauces and stuff uh, and I don't know about where you guys and girls live, uh, but I pretty much every Ace Hardware I walk into now is carrying these Blues Hog rubs. Um, so it's pretty easy to find. And then there are a ton of stores that are carrying the uh, the Blues Hog sauce as well. Um, and the same goes with the Blues Hog charcoal. Uh, they're pretty much readily available at every single Ace around here. So um, kind of that's the mindset uh, with the ingredients I'm using today. So let's go ahead and go on with the rub. That's going to be about good. So this thing's going to sit out on the countertop uh, and just let the rub soak into it until it's time to uh, throw on. So the, about five minutes here, I'll take you back out to the pit and we'll get that thing um, all set up, you know, with the baffle plate and uh, get it coming up the temp. So we'll see you in just a little bit. Back out at the drum smoker. 50 minutes has gone off. Um, so you can kind of see you got a nice, um, if you look into it, you got a nice hot bed of coals down there already. So we're going to go ahead, first things first, take our chunk of cherry, take our chunk of hickory and throw it right in. And we're going to go in with the baffle plate next. Just like this. On with our grill grate. On the top pegs. And then uh, go ahead and close this thing down. And let the temps start climbing. Uh, once the gauge starts reading around 275, I'm going to dial back um, my intakes here. Probably to about... Oh... I'd say about that much, like you can stick a finger in there and that's usually hopefully where it runs. So, um, but we're gonna wait for that gauge to start coming up. And once it hits, like I said, about that 275, I'm gonna dial the intakes back. Get this thing dialed around 300. So the next time you see me is when we're throwing the pork butt on. So we'll see you then. All right, we're back. Uh, drum is right around 300. So let's go ahead and get the pork butt on. And again, we're going fat cap down. Put it right in the middle. Just like that. 
let's go ahead and close this thing down. And uh, you know, I've done enough pork butts where I really don't probe them anymore. So I'm gonna let this go for probably about an hour, maybe two hours before I check it. But I don't know if you can tell, but it has started to rain. The wind has picked up. So uh, we are gonna see how well this thing does in the storm today. So we will pick back up uh, probably about an hour or two. All right, we're one hour uh, into the cook. So let's go ahead and open this up and just see how we're looking. Pretty good. This is taking internal, even though I know it ain't gonna be ready to wrap yet, but it's taking internal. Sitting at about 86 degrees. So go ahead and close this thing down. Uh, I'm not gonna spritz it, I don't think. At least not now, maybe I'll spritz it. I don't know, in another hour or so, but that, it's still a little soft up top. But I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'll probably pick back up one more time before we wrap. So I'm thinking this will probably be going for, let's just say three hours, I bet, before I wrap. So we'll probably pick up then. We've been on for three hours. Uh, it is raining right now, so I apologize for the camera angle, but I don't feel like getting my $700 camera wet. And I didn't want to put a tent up this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and check the internal on this. Right at about 155. There's a view of the butt looking pretty dang good. But we'll go ahead and close this thing down. Probably let this go, probably for about another half hour, 45 minutes, and I'm thinking the temps should hopefully be uh, right at about that 165, 170. Usually when I wrap pork butts and briskets and stuff, you know, usually anywhere between 165 and 170 is the sweet spot where I like to wrap. So we'll keep cooking along here, um, and uh, we'll probably pick back up uh, when we're wrapping it up. So we'll see you then. All right, we are back. We've been on for three and a half hours. Uh, go ahead and take a peek. Hoping it's right between 165-ish, 170. We'll see. Give it a probe. Oh my, look at that. Right at 167. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is pull this thing off, and I'm going to wrap it in some foil. So I'll take you inside, and uh, well, I'll show you how I wrap a pork putt in tinfoil. All right, we are up in the kitchen. Um, sorry for the creepy whisper, but Mini Mad Horse is sleeping right now. We don't want to wake him, but got my aluminum foil out. Let's go ahead and take the pork butt. Hot. And then all I'm going to do to this is I'm just going to add a little more rub to it. And the rub we're going to add is the same rub we went on with um, at the beginning of the Blues Hog Sweet and Savory. It's going to be good. We're going to go ahead. This is three layers of foil. We're just going to triple wrap it just like that. So back out to the smoker we go. Close her back up. And I'm gonna guess this has probably got about another couple hours, but I'll probably start probing it uh, in about an hour and a half or so. So um, I think, uh, I don't know when we're gonna pick up next. It might be when I'm shredding into it or it might be when I'm probing it. Either way, uh, you know, we'll pick back up here in uh, a little bit. All right, we are back. Uh, it's time to eat. Well, it's time to pull the pork first and then it's time to eat. Real quick, we'll go over to cook times. Total cook time today of five and a half hours. Did three and a half hours right on the grill. And then another two hours, uh, you know, wrapped in foil. That makes three and a half, two, yeah. five and a half. Um, sometimes I don't do the math right here. So just, you know, just probe tender is what you want. But five and a half hours total cook time. Let's go ahead and get this thing under the foil. See how we did. First thing first, going to flip this over. I'm going to take the fat cap off, or most of it off, just because I don't want to mix all that fat in with the pork. Kind of gross, in my opinion. Go ahead, pull the bone out. Clean pull. Let's go ahead, see if I can flip it back over. I don't know why. Let's just go ahead and shred into this and see how easy it shreds. Which just shreds like butter. That's again, that's why you wait until this is probe tender. Alright, that'll be good for now. Let's go ahead and uh, give this a taste test. See what we did there. A little close up on the pork um, looking like pulled pork so go ahead and give it a try mm. you know pretty <laughs> pretty dang good I gotta say that that blues hog sweet and savory on there is pretty good um, and then the combination of the uh, the blues hog all natural lump and you know mixed with you know a chunk of cherry and a chunk of hickory you know nice nice smoky I'll say a subtle smoky flavor it's not overpowering or anything um, but yeah you know when it comes to using that baffle plate, I honestly 
don't have a single issue with it. Uh, I didn't have any flare-ups or anything. Uh, so to those you know posts I've been seeing about flare-ups, um, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I just I, you know I didn't have any issues with it. So um, yeah. Now besides that, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna sign off here. We're gonna make some sandwiches. We're gonna eat dinner. And uh, yeah. So it's about all I got. So you guys and girls have a good night. Yeah. And uh, if you enjoyed this content, you know make sure to subscribe. You know, hit that notification bell so you get notifications when I put out new videos because I'm a guy who likes to uh, smoke meat, drink bush light, and uh, buy grills. So until next time, we'll see you later.